Hey everyone, welcome to Draw Sessions. We got a good one today. Uh, based on several very, very good suggestions from last week about what three animals to combine. Uh, user Giant Nova. Dude, you had a very, very good one. And I couldn't pass this one up. So what are we going to be drawing today? It's going to be a knobbed hornbill mixed with a basking shark mixed with a honey badger. <laughs> um... As soon as I saw a honey badger mixed in there, I, I couldn't say no to it. So here we go. This is how I would start the process. First of all, <clears throat> I need to figure out what body type is going to be the main driving force. Do I want it to be a bird? Do I want it to swim? Or do I want it to be a four-legged honey badger? Anybody is familiar with a honey badger, these things just basically can't die. They're awesome. They'll fight anything. They will fight a king cobra. They will dip their head into a, a giant nest of ground hornets. They don't care. I love this bird. The knobbed hornbill is one of those gorgeous birds. Uh, I, I believe they're located in Indonesia, but I could be wrong. Um, basking sharks are truly alien looking sharks. I'm not even sure that they have teeth larger than like a cent. All right, first things first, I think that we could probably benefit from this thing being swimming. Now, we don't normally, as creature designers, for some odd reason, we don't do a lot of marine life. We tend to stick to insectoid, bipedal, or quadruped animals on land. But it's pretty refreshing when we see creatures that can either fly or swim. So let's go that route. I think what I'm going to do is just slightly sketch in a body here. Um, I'm not going to use this, this straight-on approach the basking shark is in the photo. But I know that I want to use some of the nose of the basking shark as well as that hornbill because I think it's awesome. You're probably wondering, where the heck am I going to put the honey badger in all this? Well, <laughs> I don't know yet. And that's the fun part. So this could be a, a home run that we're going to be doing today or this could be a complete train wreck. So let's find out what happens. Okay, so I, I love the crest on top of that, that head of the um, hornbill. And I think it fits the aquatic life quite well, just because it looks like a fin. But also, you know, there, there have been known to be ancient animals that lived in the sea that actually had beaks. And there are, I believe, some creatures today that have beaks, and they're, and they're swimming mammals, so... Let's see what happens. All right. So I don't want to copy directly from the photos. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start messing around with some of the silhouette. Now, from the previous lessons, if you all remember, we have our primary, secondary, and our tertiary shapes. And I think with this one, the, the primary shape is going to be that uh, basking shark. All right, so I, th I think the beak, if this thing were to have a beak and still swim, why not have it right there? So we can play with the shape of the face some. We can make it truly alien. It's important to flip the camera too, because I don't want to, um, I want to get too myopic, you know, like staring at one space too often. Flip it around. Uh, if I wanted to get weird with it, I could probably open the mouth up a little bit. And I think that's what I'm going to do, but I'm going to change it up a little bit. So if you notice on the basking shark, how it kind of opens up in a diamond shape. So I think for the basking shark, why don't we split the mouth of this creature? Okay, and I, I do love, on the hornbill, that gullet. That really cool purplish, and then over here in the photo, the, the blue um, throat piece. I don't know what that's called, so forgive me. So I'm going to put that on this swimming creature because maybe this swimming creature needs that to breathe. Maybe, yeah, there we go. Those are the gills. So you notice I'm kind of thinking out loud here, and this is the beauty of being a creature designer. It's really the beauty of being a concept artist in general. Um... One of the hardest things about being a concept artist, though, is coming up with concepts. 
And you're all probably wondering, based on the, the title of today's video, like the one thing that successful creature designers do that, that unsuccessful ones don't, and that is they don't try to make stuff up from their head all the time. And the belief is that you're a better concept artist if you can make stuff up on the fly. There is some truth to that. However, the reason successful concept artists are able to make stuff up on the fly is because they look at reference like I'm doing right now. And a lot of times reference goes overlooked simply because people think it's either cheating or you're not actually an artist, you're just copying. I can guarantee you that the most successful creature designers out there that work for the big visual effects companies and the, and the biggest AAA studios, you better believe that they have a plethora of reference ready at their disposal if they were ever to have to come up with a creature on the fly. And I won't go as far as to say when they are given a brief or they are given a new project at work, they spend the entire day just collecting reference. That's it. All right, so I think what I want to do is start bringing in some of that honey badger energy. And the, the face of the honey badger, it's, it's not that unique in a sense that it doesn't look absolutely crazy because ferrets, wolverines, regular badgers, and other rodents, they kind of have that same facial structure, even skunks. I mean, look at the body. It literally looks like a skunk, just longer neck, not as big of a tail. But the one thing that sets this thing apart, I think, is the, the forehead area of the, of the honey badger and also how wide apart the eyes are set. You know, it's kind of like when you look at a pit bull, you know it's a pit bull because of the, the thickness of the jaw and the forehead. It just looks intimidating and, and very beautiful. Okay, so when you look at a forehead like this, you notice, okay, it has some hair, but <laughs> it does look kind of like it has a bowl cut. It's like a rounded head, so why don't we give it a rounded head? And then maybe we can hint at some fur that grows on top of it. Now, since this thing is swimming, a lot of the marine life they don't have a lot of body hair, okay? So when you look at a polar bear, uh, there's, it's not a lot. It's a very, very thin coating. When you look at like leopard seals or anything with, with uh, hair, even penguins, very slick looking. So I think it's important to honor that because who, kno who knows what animals may be swimming on in, a, you know, in another planet hundreds of millions of light years away from Earth, who knows? might not even be water. It could be lakes of methane or, or something. Um, we really got to think about that. I think another thing that I want to put on, on this face, I, I really like the incisors and how they poke outwards from, from the honey badger. Now, I'm not going to copy each tooth, but what I am going to do is I'm going to shorten the width of this mouth okay, and have it come out. And then I, I like the bottom actually having incisors. I think that'd be kind of cool. Like that. So that maybe the jaws can widen like this when they open up, kind of like a snake. But when they close, they they close up around the beak. You know, like so here's the beak up here and I think it'd be cool to do like a little diagram. So let's do that real quick. So there, and we'll, we'll have like a little spot on the side of the beak, like a little inset so that when the creature shuts its mouth, the teeth have somewhere to rest while the mouth is closed. Okay, so a shut beak will look like this for the creature. So we'll have maybe the teeth come up like this, and then the bottom jaw, and then you have that big circular gullet, and then the head. And maybe you can see the teeth on the other side, and then maybe the eyes are down there. That'd be kind of cool. Maybe I'll draw one in the couple minutes while we flesh out this head some more. And then I'll give it maybe another tooth here, another tooth here, and so on. You got to give it bone structure though, because you have to make it look like the teeth are growing from a skull that's inset in, those, in the skin and the muscles. All right, so something else that's fun. Look at the inside of that basking shark, the mouth. So that's really, really good looking 
as far as uh, design wise. I mean, evolution, you can't go wrong with it. So maybe we can put those really intimidating looking, it almost looks like pendant sections right there. We can put that in there. Open that mouth there. Maybe there's some flesh inside there like that. And then it runs up all the roof of the mouth. And this will obviously have to be in shadow. Just so you can tell where the light is hitting like that. All right. So next, um, the, sh the shape of the actual crest. I want to change that. Oops. I'm going to do this. I'm going to round it off. I'm going to put it down like that and then have it roll right back on the head. Okay, so let's shrink this a little bit. There we go. Okay, so next up, um, we can do the neck. Now, I, I like the neck on the basking shark because it's really thick on the bottom here. I'm having a problem though with that head. I, I don't think that's gonna work with that crest yet, so I'm gonna take the crest off. And this is just years of experience being a creature designer because proportions are everything. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thicken that beak and then lower the crest. Because what, what that'll enable me to do is bring more of the honey badger head in there. Because that's a, it's a pretty formidable looking forehead. So that way you have some bone up here. There we go. That looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that, that's so weird looking. Actually, I'm going to keep drawing from this way. All right, there we go. And I'm just going to add in some, some structure around here uh, to make it look like the side of it's rounded. And as I've stated before in a couple other creature sketches, most of the energy is going to be put in and around the eyeballs. And the reason of that is because the personality comes out of the eye, regardless of what the creature is that you're drawing. It's important to have a good personality showing through. Not good personality like this is a good person or it's nice. No, it means that you want it, you want to be, uh, you want this to be recognizable. Okay. Now, the shape of this head, and this is what happens often in creature design, the shape of this head is actually dictating what I want the body to do. Because right now, some proportions are not matching up, and I'm going to have to change these a little bit. So I'm going to have to thicken that neck. So originally, this was the, the, the air sac on the side, or whatever that is on the hornbill. I'm going to make it on the side of the actual jaw. So here's the jawbone. Let's point it. Okay, so let's add in a little bit of creative freedom followed by the head. This could be the air sac that it keeps as it goes really deep under the water. Okay, and then I'm going to wrap the body around like that. Okay, so now we're getting into the fun part. Fins. Now the, <laughs> the fins are going to be a little strange just because we've, we've mixed in a lot of the mammalian side on this. Here's the other thing that I notice. See, this, this is what happens, folks. I'm going to take the eyeball, and I just noticed this. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to move it up like that. Look how much that changes the whole dynamic of the head. Because it was looking... And I don't mind drawing creepy things. I didn't want this particular thing to be creepy. I wanted this to be aquatic, and there is a, a difference. A lot of times, aquatic marine life will have eyes placed on the side of the head far out so they can see approaching danger from all angles of their body. Now that, that's why lobsters have this kind of eyeball. Like this, where lobster eyes just kind of come up. And they can move. It's, it's crazy looking. All right. So once we did that, this kind of changed everything. So I'm going to add in a little bit more energy around that eye. Maybe a little bit more fleshiness. 
And I'm not really worried about detail at this point. I, I just want something cool looking. So I'm going to put the stretchy membrane skin right here. Maybe similar to uh, the flexible skin on an octopus. Or even a, a snapping turtle, you know, the, the membrane in between both jaws. All right. Um, now I, I notice that up here on the hornbill, it looks like the beak goes all the way back past that head crest. I think that's what I'm going to do for the for this creature, which is cool because then I can attach that to the head and I can actually have something fin-wise coming up here. So I'll worry about the fin later. I'm worried about the body now. Okay, so we, we have a main basking shark body, but we also have the body of the, uh, the honey badger coming up. Now, <clears throat> as I'm looking at this, I'm noticing that it's kind of losing the honey badger look, and I definitely don't want to do that. So I'm thinking, hmm, I really like this area on the honey badger, even the nose. Why don't we put the honey badger nose directly on top of the beak. Instead of there just being a typical hole in the beak, which most birds have, why don't we add the honey badger nose? And then it'll be really crazy looking. It's looking weird already, and I love it. There's a honey badger nose. <laughs> like that. Okay, and then I, I do like the wrinkles. So I'm gonna put in the wrinkles, kind of like it's scowling. I'll put that right up there by the beak. And it looks like it has one prominent forehead wrinkle right there. And then the crest. Okay, so now we had that. Yeah, it's looking a little crazier now, and I'm totally for it. I'm fine. I could. I could very well add in the incisors. Hey, why not? Let's add in those incisors. So now we have this weird swimming hornbill basking shark honey badger taking shape. And I'm kind of just lightly sketching in part of the, the jaw here that I want to keep. Um, I do like the rodent look for the honey badger's face, but I also like the, the protruding eyes, especially on the basking shark. You notice that. Um, I'm actually going to change this jaw again. This is the fun part of being a creature designer. You can kind of invent things on the fly, but you can still keep your design grounded. This jaw on the basking shark is very prominent. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to keep the shape of that jaw to about right there. And you can see the skull coming up. So maybe the skin is still folding around the back of that eye socket. And maybe there's a hole in the in the the uh, membrane there. Wouldn't that be crazy looking? It's all dark inside there. And it's like dark inside the mouth. So there's a hole inside the membrane that just folds up when it shuts its mouth. I'm going to keep that. That'll add in that weird factor that we're, that we're looking for. Because ultimately when you want to design creatures, you want to keep it weird enough to where you're like, you know what? Yeah, you know, that, that doesn't exist anywhere. We have something here. And that's... That's the direction that I want to go. There we go. I just had to add in that crest a little bit. Okay, so we got some honey badger mixed in. We got a beak at the hornbill. We got the jaw structure of a, of a basking shark. Now it's getting there. Okay, so let's figure out what kind of body we want this thing to have. So the obviously the lung system and the gills are going to be close to the mouth. Um, Let's play up with the actual shape of the gill. So we won't need to see a very, very wide opening of it because we know just from seeing the slits that those open wide enough to gather air in general. Well, we're still gonna have to be definitive on the shapes that we're using, okay? So you have to imagine this thing being sent to um, a modeling department. Okay, we want the modeling department to be able to look at this and go, oh, okay, so I see what's happening here. So let's, you know, we can model that based on your drawing. And I'm putting darker lines around the outline 
of the creature just so we can see the silhouette too. Okay, man, that's looking weird. <laughs> Especially if we start adding in fur on that beak part. And I notice also some ridges on the, the head. So let's do that. Oof, looking pretty cool. Has some maybe loose, loose feathers back there. Um, nothing really going on on the neck part. I, I could add some hair down here. I think that's a good idea to do just because it's filler from how the body parts change. And that's, that's one cool thing that you could do on animals that fly too. Like if, if you're doing a bird creature, you can do a beak. And then once the beak stops, if you look up here at the hornbill, I'll zoom in. If you look up here at the hornbill, uh, there's a fine line between the beak material and the fur. But like when you get to an area of the throat, it blends into the, that big throat air sac. So when you show blending abilities like fur and hair on the neck blending into a hairless head, that's a, it's a pretty good skill to have. There we go. I'm also adding in some wrinkles where this creature might raise its eyebrows or, you know, have to use in order to lift its eye shaft. A lot, a lot of different possibilities. So let's see what this thing looks like zoomed out. I noticed something. I believe that this bottom jaw is a little too small. So let's bring that out a little bit and then let's taper it. So I'm just gonna warp it. So I'm just gonna bring the sketch back. And then we can always adjust and fix those. There we go. That looks a little bit more proportionate. Okay, so then we can just, we can go in and correct those connectors. Make sure the muscles look good, like right there. Um, the membrane inside plus the jaw muscle on the other side has some skin stretching. So, so now it looks, it kind of looks like trimmers. <laughs> so we might have to, we might have to change that again. So who knows? Um, but anywho, let's continue with some of the smaller details here. Okay, the fin. I don't want to copy directly from the basking shark, but the fin also needs to be big enough to where it can push this creature along because it does look like a rather large animal. So let's put in some really cool shapes here. Kind of running out of room down there, but that's okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is uh, this usually separates a really good creature designer from somebody that's just learning. Okay, what you want to do is you want to attach each appendage to the body and make it look like it's growing from it versus having it placed on it. So this, we're going to imagine this thing has a shoulder. Now, if you notice over here on the basking shark, it kind of just stops abruptly. However, when you look close up on a basking shark, it anything but that. Okay, uh, let me change color here on the pencil. Look how the fin comes up and then it fades into this whole area here. That's because that is the shoulder part. And then the fin is more prominent as it comes to that point in the back. Okay, so there's two different types of visual cues that we're seeing here. We have over here where the flesh looks like it's flowing directly into the skin, and here is where it's not. We know that at the connecting part, that's where that shoulder needs to be. So let's treat, the, treat it the same way on our sketch. This is going to help it make more believe, make it be more believable. Okay, so let's just make it flow directly into that. Maybe put another gill right here. So we're not going to copy directly from the basking shark. We're going to take design cues from the, the basking shark. Okay, because here's that second part of the appendage. It's way out there. But that probably wouldn't make sense. Okay, so we need to trust what we see in nature. There's the second part. And then there's the shoulder part. So maybe even have the shoulder pop up. Maybe this thing is actually quite muscular and more mammalian than originally we planned on. 
So here I'm just adding some sketchy lines to give the indication that this is, this is the shadow. This is underneath the creature. There's the jaw. Let's look at it from another angle. Okay, there we go. Um, now, it, it, the bottom of this kind of looks a little cheesy, so why don't we do something a little bit more deadly and add a hook, followed by a grabber. Not a human grabber, but something that almost looks human, but not quite. It's a little, little bit too human, so let's do this. Let's just poke one out right there. So maybe it uses that. And then we have this fin and add in the little grooves here. All right, so now we know that this is the belly of the basking shark. Well, called it a basking shark. This is the belly of the, of the creature as it wraps around here. Okay, so here's what I want to do so that we can get some atmospheric perspective without actually having to shade a lot. And that is, let's darken the lines that we know are closest to us. And we're going to put in some value. Because what happens is, the, at the angle that I drew this creature, we have some overlapping distance. We know that the fin is closest to us, so that gets a darker treatment than any of these lines under here going back to the background. The bottom of the head, or I'm sorry, the neck, and then you got the chest area, that's going to be dark for two reasons. One, it's closest to us, and two, that's where the shadow is. Okay, so especially if the light's hitting from above, you can show a lot in the lighting without actually having to shade a ton. Okay, again, I'm just going to go back to some details of the head. Um, by now, you've seen my drawing technique where I have, it, it's not a sporadic or ADD way of drawing. It's just, I go from, oh, here's the beak, and oh, I got an idea over here on the, on the fin. Don't feel bad about doing that. Don't focus on one area. Please jump from one area to the other because that spark that you feel when you want to add something to a completely opposite part of the creature will probably go away in 15 seconds. You won't even remember to put it there. But it could have been an awesome addition that you wouldn't have thought of before. So take advantage of that. I'll tell you, man, I, I travel all around my, my sketches until it's finished. But there's one universal thing that I do follow, and I always put most of my energy in the eyeball. I always go back to the eye. I'll start with it, or I'll start with the jaw, and then I'll go back to the eye. It's because the eye is super important for so many reasons. It, it sets the tone, to me at least, for the way the creature could look later. Okay, um, some other things that I want to do to maybe bring in the honey badger. Okay, I really like the way the fur looks on the body in general. It's very streamlined looking. What if we did something like that to the head here and then the back? So if we just erase an area to where the fur maybe could travel down the back and do something with that shape, I think that would be awesome. Okay, so it, it, I'm going to draw in the outline of where the, the fur could be. So it looks like it comes down. And then it follows most of the, the top of the back on the honey badger. It comes, it comes pretty far down. So what if we did that, but instead of having it go straight down, you know, we'll add in some fur going around the back of this thing. Okay, because th this line that I drew will also be furry. I just wanted to indicate where it was. And in that case, I'm going to take a softer brush. I'm just going to lightly erase what I drew. And then I'm going to fill it back in with uh, some fur. And maybe even up top here. I think that would be cool. Oops, wrong button. So that will give an indication that there's a, an appendage difference. Remember what I was talking about before where, you know, how, how are you going to show the fin going into a shoulder? And in this case, how are you going to show the, the change of the, the structure of the face here from a fin to fur? In that case, you want to fade the fur up into the fin to make it look like it, it's growing from it. Okay, so we're going to do the, the honey badger fur is pretty flat. It's kind of like a golf course on the host. So um, I, don't, I don't really like those humps right there on the back. 
So what I am going to do is I'm actually going to take some design cues from the honey badger and maybe have a flat back here. I think that would be kind of cool. And then come down with the fur. Right like that. There we go. I'm going to open some of the gills up. I think that would look cool. This is also a, a good way to show some contrast with your drawing, especially if you're doing it traditionally or digitally. And that is wherever the, the shadows are, the dark darks, it's okay to make them way darker than the surrounding area. Okay, so one of the benefits from working digitally is that you already have a pure white background from the digital aspect in Photoshop. And then you could just add in darkness and it stays pretty clean. If you're working on paper, you're going to need something a little darker to draw with, which for me, I draw with a black Prismacolor. My go-to pencil is a 4B, but when I need to make something truly dark, it's the black Prismacolor. All right, so th there is a, uh, it's really coming along, and I noticed that I can even go lower with the fur here. So I'm going to go all the way down. It looks like it's going to cover some of the shoulder now, and then it's going to wrap around the body like this. I'm going to keep the fur pretty flat, but I'm going to indicate some messiness. The reason I'm keeping it flat is remember, this is an aquatic animal. So when this thing swims, it's not going to have a bunch of thick fur floating in the water or anything. No, there's a reason why marine life barely has any hair to begin with. But what I am going to do is I'm going to show a little bit of hair just to indicate that it's there. Okay, and I'm going to put some shadow in on the, the actual bill up here just to give some, some fun shapes and shadows here to look at. Okay, next thing I want to do is I want to figure out in perspective where that other fin is on the other side. Okay, so another, another impromptu lesson that I'm going to give now that we're actually at this, at this point is perspective. It's easy to do mechanical things in perspective, like products, stuff with straight lines, uh, the gridded out sci-fi city that everybody does, including me. I did it tons. The car. It's because we can, we can take metal objects that with straight edges and just have it be set against our perspective lines going to a horizon line. In the case of organics, it's going to be a little different. You're going to have to use a little bit of draw-through techniques. All right? So what that means is I see my joint for the shoulder right here. I'm going to put in a little oval. So I have to imagine that the thickness of this creature is going to be pretty daunting. Like it's a formidable um, swimming creature. So I'm going to make a new layer so I don't draw on top of my drawing. And I'm going to put in an oval. And then I'm going to pretend that this thing is going around the creature on the other side. Notice how I keep the arc on that side. I don't change this at all. I don't bring it in or anything. I trust the arc. All right, now, perspective-wise, our vanishing point is somewhere over here. So you see I'm drawing on the basking shark photo. Okay, it's going to be pretty far off in the distance. We don't want to do close-up. Um, vanishing points because then we force the perspective and it looks like fish eye lens and it just looks bad. But in this case, we're going to have it off of the paper. So I'm going to lightly sketch in some perspective lines going to that imaginary vanishing point. Keep this on a separate layer. So right about here, that's going to be the horizon line. And then slowly you're going to be under the horizon line and you're going to sketch in the perspective lines going the opposite direction. You've learned about this in Drawing 101. So you notice that the fin down here also needs to go into perspective. Okay, so what I want to do is make sure that these are clean lines. Okay, so if this one's going here, it's almost following the same direction as the bottom of that um, fin with the hook on it. So what I can do is I can just trust that line that I drew for the bottom of the jaw. Okay, this doesn't, this doesn't have to be super, like, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the sketch of my mammal, 
and make sure that it's on the right layer. And I'm going to start the shoulder here where that arc is because it's showing me where the, um, the joint is. And I'm going to have it come out this way because it's on the opposite end of the, the mammal. And I'm just going to curve it this way. Now notice how I went under just a little bit where that horizon or the perspective line is. It's because the hook over here goes under it a little bit. So you can see the perspective line how it goes under it. Okay, well you need to you need to trust that. Go under it here. And then you're just going to you're going to flatten that fin out because the fin is turned in a way. It's kind of like when you look at a piece of paper and directly in front of you, you can see the rectangle. But when you turn the paper horizontally, it's a completely skinny line. Same thing can be said about this when you turn the fin the opposite way. All right, so now I trust my perspective. Now I can see where that went. Now we're getting somewhere. I'm actually going to keep that jaw even though it looks um, like trimmers. Okay, I'm going to take off the perspective lines, and there we have it. So now we have something way more trustworthy, and I'm going to shrink the drawing a little bit more. All right. All right, like that. Okay, so now I'm just going to sketch in the belly here. So I'm looking at the basking shark and I, I could just directly go for a shark. Like yeah, I could put a fin in there. Why don't we just have fun with it? Since this is fading off in the distance, all right, and shark fins go up and down, why don't we just do something kind of similar to where it goes up and down like this. But for the bottom fin, maybe it juts out and it's kind of like one of the old propellers to one of the old submarines or something and it just kind of goes down like that. But I don't want to put any more detail in that because that's not the focal point. I actually don't like that. <laughs> not that I'm looking at it. Let's do this. Maybe the fin just goes back. Keep it simple. Okay, the fin is not the driving force. Maybe we can have some smaller ones coming out here to help it swim. Maybe some smaller ones come out on the side of the body. I did a little perspective check where I, I rolled it under the belly to the up opposite side and it's growing from this end. Maybe there's one a little bit closer underneath, but we won't be able to see it here. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to add in, not a rib cage, but I'm going to put in a center line down the creature. It's where it, it kind of tells me where I need to round things off, maybe where organs are, etc. Um, I could probably change some of this fur here on the head. I'm going to switch views here. And I'm just going to lightly tap in some of the hair. There we go. So now it looks more natural, like it's growing from the head. Okay. So I, I think another thing I want to do, I still want to change that the the hornbill part because I don't I don't feel like we captured any more hornbill anymore. So let's put that shape in there. But let's make it a little bit more prominent. Let's erase the back. And let's put a tuft of hair, kind of like on the bird forehead. So it's mixed with the honey badger and then the bird. There we go. And then I, I really like, maybe we'll put the beak here. All right, that is really weird. <laughs> but that's the fun part. So let's, uh, let's erase some of that because we, we need to make it look like it's growing into it. Okay, there we go. So maybe it starts there, and then the skin separate there. Man, this is this is getting pretty crazy. All right, so let's start adding in some details, especially on the head. This could be some wrinkles. So what I'm doing now is I'm I'm going back and forth and just adding in some sketchy lines, without going into too much detail. All right, so I think what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to add in a tongue. That does not look like a tongue. Let's put in 
maybe something that looks a little bit more weird, kind of like an octopus or something that looks like it can latch onto the prey. That's pretty terrifying, actually. There we go. So now it's like, what in the world is that? That is a tongue, folks. And now what we'll do is we'll add in some inner mouth organs and appendages and skin so that it looks more realistic. All right, so now we put in a little bit more detail, getting that face looking good, put in some shape in that beak, and I think we have a truly unique creature going on here. So thank you, Giant Nova, for your, your suggestion. Also, if I don't pick your ideas, everybody, don't worry about it. I, because even if you suggest one and I don't answer to it in the comments or whatever, it doesn't mean that I didn't see it. And it doesn't mean that it's not going on a backlog. I've kept track of every single creature suggestion. Okay, so when I choose a creature, it's usually one that's, that like strikes me right away. And it's not that the other ones aren't good. It's that there's just something really strange about that, that idea. And a lot of them are, are tough to pick because there are so many good ideas. So I really appreciate everybody doing that. All right, there we have it. The knobbed hornbill, the basking shark, and the honey badger. That's in the, that's in the books. What I suggest to do now is... You know, tell me what you thought about this session today. Tell me what you learned. Tell me, tell me things that you would like me to teach in the next episode. Because, I, you know, not only from designing creatures, but drawing in, in general. And then um, comment below what three animals you want me to mix in the next one. And I might just choose yours. So get crazy with it. Do insects. Do marine life, do stuff that flies. Uh, you can even do ancient mammals that are extinct now. I don't care. Do it. No, let's, let's hear it. But thanks again, everybody, and uh, I'll see you next time.